Great. Many thanks to everyone for joining today. I think we will kick things off. So first of all, thank you very much for joining this webinar, which will be a closeout for um, the data-driven electrification program that the IA has been doing in collaboration with Power Africa and USAID, um, as well as our partners at MIT. So while today we will be mostly focusing on a new tool that is um, if I do say so, quite cool um, to try and figure out um, the best ways to use GIS to map um, which regions of Africa remain unelectrified and what the likely demand of those buildings will be. Um, I also want to give you a little bit of context in the broader program and what else we have done in the context of this. So um, this program has been a multi-year program that has really focused on how do we get better data around electric. And I think that you know, there's already a great foundation that we've been building on with really uh, great survey work that has helped lay the foundations there. But we know that there are limits to that process, that those surveys are expensive and take uh, five years between different uh, surveys to be able to sort of re-up that data. Um, and that there's an increasing focus on how do we move faster and new technologies like off-grid systems that are really changing the equation on how we do this. And so this piece of work that we put together was really thinking about what are the different levers we have to give countries and investors and uh, the development community a better sense of how things are changing in real time and being able to build these data sets with more granularity down to the household and building level to really understand and gauge progress. So um, I always like to say uh, data work is frequently the work that is uh, not necessarily the most glamorous. People don't love to fund it. People want to be thinking about projects and investment, but I do really view it as taking the vitamins or eating the vegetables that we need to, to make sure everything else is functioning. And oftentimes when people say, well, data and analysis is important, but it's uh, far afield from making investments happen. This is a notion I think we, we really want to push back on. And also in the context of this initiative, we are seeing that really the provision of data and the right types of data are absolutely essential to making uh, making or breaking some of these projects in terms of taking them over to bankability. And what I mean by that in particular is when financial deals are done, the first thing that different investors do is they go out and they look for benchmarks. When different people are preparing financial uh, plans for projects or expansions, and they're trying to make sure that they're using credible data and credible assumptions that have been backed by rigorous uh, science and authorities that have vetted this data to make sure that they are being able to make a strong case that this is uh, a, you know, a credible project and credible financial projections. Um, so in many ways, having these benchmarks, I think is absolutely essential to being able to make uh, the business cases that the investment community feels confident in moving forward. So while this is sort of a, a stretch where there's many different pieces of the supply chain to get to there, I do wanna draw that connection because I think it's really important for when people think about how this data is relevant to the real world and how these data foundations really help support the um, movement of more money to this critical end use of electrification in Africa. So um, with that as a sort of a big picture thing, I just wanna say concretely what we've done in this. So one, the big focus first and foremost was to upgrade and provide a new guidance on how do we use supply side data sources um, in Africa to track progress on uh, electricity access. So this is really saying each year, how do we make sure our utilities by region are providing information and data and that says this is how many connections we provided um, in what regions and what types of connections and ideally geolocating those as well. But also how do we work with mini grid developers and off grid systems and using their sales data and their uh, permitting data to make sure we're getting a stronger base there. We did a ton of work with a lot of different African um, statistics divisions standing up this new uh, supply side methodology and survey approach. Um, and really, we're already seeing reaping the benefits of that, where people are getting more granular data, more detailed and timely data on this. And for the first time, the IEA was really able to actually parse out and provide an estimate at the continent wide level on new connections each year by type of connection. And what we saw was that the revolution in solar and batteries and new business models around off-grid and solar home systems meant that last year, or actually in 2022, that half of the new connections were from off-grid systems um, in Africa. And this has been a big pivot where grid has really been dominating things historically, but we're seeing with the, the debt crisis and the, the slowdown in sort of utility revenues, we're seeing that model being uh, facing strains and without sort of additional concessional support, 
that we might be shifting to a mode where we need, need to rely more on these off-grid approaches. Um, so I think that's one area where we've seen this data work actually be able to produce really important outcomes that are really resonating at the top level when people are thinking about their strategies. And the second piece on this as well is really trying to make sure we're working with different uh, African stakeholders and using the GIS tools that are already out there. And today we're gonna, we've are gonna we just launched a repository of all the GIS data sets and tools and ongoing projects in different African countries related to electrification and that can be used. And so I really encourage practitioners to explore um, and use these um, and explore this data set and figure out what tools and data sets may be available in your country and can be used uh, to greater uh, effect. Um, the last thing as well is we just had a, we ran a pretty comprehensive boot camp training on some of these GIS foundations with our partners at Climate Compatible Growth, um, along with the World Bank, WRI, and SE for All. Um, and this was really a great way to make sure we got everyone in the room understanding what are the tools available and how do I, as a local practitioner in government, say, what are the data sets I support? How do I stand those up? And how do I make sure that we are putting the best tools available uh, to, to work for us in our electrification planning. Um, and I think that brings us to the new tool today, um, which my colleague Darlene um, and our colleague Stephen uh, from MIT will go through. Um, but really this tool, I think, provides a first of its kind ability to one, at the building level, really understand what buildings likely have electricity and which ones don't. And the number of times we've gone through this mapping in different countries where we've seen a community that we know with 80% certainty, they have electricity today, and 400 meters down the road, a smaller outcropping that has no electricity access. And these are very low hanging fruit ways in which companies can say, grid companies, utilities, off-grid uh, solutions can say, these are easy customers to electrify. And I, instead of having to go village to village to make this assessment, I can now sit at my computer at my desk, put together a customer acquisition uh, strategy and plan, and this will greatly reduce the cost of me finding these new customers. Additionally, with this, we use, they use the latest machine learning and AI algorithms to look at millions of different photos of these different buildings and look at their surroundings. And these clock onto small things like the pavement of roads, the different, the density of buildings and all these different signs that may signal their access to commercial markets, and their ability to um, access uh, additional employment that could help raise incomes. And this also becomes a very important way to be able to target which buildings are going to have the highest demand and also the higher ability to pay for higher amounts of electricity. So this really collectively, I think, strengthens the business case for many companies to be able to use this tool, identify priority communities, and then also think about with new business models, with the right incentives and government backing, how do we find ways to broach this challenge in, in further afield communities as well? So um, I will leave that there, um, but just again, thank you to our partners in Power Africa for laying this foundation. I think you'll see today as we go through this, that this has not just applications to utilities and off-grid providers, but it's gonna be useful for funders, philanthropies, um, local statisticians, people who are running these planning operations in governments, this data set, I think, is going to be massively helpful for really taking electricity, electrification planning to the next level um, and making sure that, um, and, and the last thing I think I'll say here is the IEA stands ready, along with our partners, to work with other countries to extend this data set to your countries as well, because we really do think this can be an instrumental move uh, to really jumpstart the electrification process here. So with that, thank you again for joining, and I'll hand it over to my colleague, Darla. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. I think uh, you should be able to see now the presentation shared. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my name is Darlene. Uh, I'm also uh, in TIA and of course I'm part of uh, Dan's team. And together with uh, MIT and uh, with the uh, support of Power Africa, which is also together represented here, um, we've been uh, developing this uh, and implementing this project called Data Driven Electrification in Africa. Um, I want to uh, walk you through the rationale of this initiative um, and the agenda for today will be developed uh, as follows. So we will start with an overview of the status of access to electricity in Africa. We will then present uh, a new data tool which is available right now on our website, which is called GIS Catalog for Energy Planning in Africa. 
and then we will uh, jump together with uh, our colleague from MIT on the uh, new model that we are also releasing today. And then, of course, there will be uh, space for conclusions and uh, Q&A uh, that I invite you to uh, post in the Q&A function of uh, the Zoom webinar so that we can uh, collect them and address them by the end of the, of the webinar. So the first point, as I said, on the status. Um, as you can see, as, as you know, I think this is no news for, for all of you. Um, we stand uh, at a moment in which the population of Africa uh, has been uh, increasing quite a lot, I would say, in the past years, and is currently the region which has the highest um, growth rate in terms of, of population year. You can see how was the, the trend in the past 23 years, so from the beginning of uh, the 21st century. And you can see how Africa's population as a total has, always, has almost uh, doubled. This uh, has created, um, so like this has created a situation uh, in which um, access expansion has struggled to pace with this uh, growing population. As you can see here with this disaggregation in terms of uh, access to electricity, you can see how uh, there were huge uh, improvements in terms of access to electricity because the population uh, having access to electricity has been uh, growing a lot. But you can see how um, the total number of people not having access to electricity across uh, the continent has uh, didn't change so much and has actually increased uh, by 100 million people uh, in the next in the last 20 23 years. There has been uh, different trends um, across these two decades. Um, first, we've seen from 2023, sorry, from 2013, the population not having access uh, to electricity decrease, um, even if not at the, the required rate, I would say, but it has been on a declining trend. Uh, what has happened is that uh, from 2020, uh, this trend has inverted for the first time. Uh, mm -hmm. since 20, uh, 2013. And uh, of course, as you might guess, this is a result of the impact of the pandemic. And the first, for the first time, the population uh, in Africa not having access to electricity uh, has been increasing. Mm -hmm. Last year, so in 2023, we've seen for the first time after the pandemic, this trend uh, having uh, an, um, an improvement, even if modest, um, which again, despite being an improvement is uh, remain significantly below the progress required to uh, achieve SDG 7. So, um, as I said earlier, in terms of number, in, in terms of numbers, in the past 23 years, we've had uh, 40, um, 450 million people, so almost half a billion people, uh, that were able to gain access to electricity. Um, so this is a huge improvement and is a testament of how good stakeholders in the continent uh, have been working towards SDG 7. But we've also had, and as said earlier, one of the reasons is, of course, this huge uh, population increase, uh, 100 million people more that have uh, that don't have access to, to electricity. If we go down uh, and we uh, break down these numbers, uh, depending on the type of, of region, we can see how uh, people that today don't have access to electricity um, are four of, like four out of five people um, that don't have access to electricity right now live in rural areas. Um, this, if we go uh, deeper and we go, we also see the different trends in the different type of regions. We can see how in urban regions electrification rates, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, have surged significantly. Um, but conversely, as you can see on the right hand side, the rural communities that uh, most of the time um, like have seen only modest enhancements in uh, electricity access. Um, this, of course, has hindered economic challenges um, and is related to the, the complexity of extending the grid to low density areas that are most of the time also uh, spart sparsely populated and also have uh, limited demand and purchase purchase power. Additionally, uh, the off-grid sector, uh, which of course includes solutions like mini grids and solar arm systems, uh, which would serve as uh, viable alternatives in these kind of scenarios, 
have also faced their own set of challenges. Um, and of course, I mean, this might not be known to the, um, new to the audience, but um, there are many uh, reasons for this. Um, main, the main uh, are, of course, unclear regulatory frameworks. Uh, and one uh, that, as IEA and as Dan was anticipating earlier, um, the lack of clear um, information and reliable, actually, information for areas uh, for which, of course, uh, it's, it's very difficult for countries to um, and statistics, statistics office to have very detailed, uh, timely, and also granular uh, information on which um, the private sector, in this case, when we talk about uh, of grid solutions can really develop uh, strong business cases. As anticipated uh, by Dan, again, uh, off-grid systems are, are becoming uh, increasingly crucial. Here you can see in the past years, um, um, at least the order of magnitude of the number of people that were gaining access to electricity um, per year in, uh, in the continent. And we can see how this value is uh, more or less between 20 and 30 million per year. But if we go, and this is really thanks to the support from Power Africa that we're able to have uh, such granularity in, uh, in our last uh, uh, estimates, uh, we can see how off-grid systems and in particular storm systems are becoming, as I said, uh, incre increasingly crucial. Um, and in 2022 alone, storm systems, uh, so both the smaller ones and the larger ones, uh, contributed to more than half of uh, the access increases in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, to conclude this part, and as mentioned, this was um, like the improvements in terms of the granularity of the data that we are able to 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 produce and also um, publish for the general public. Um, were done thanks to the contribution and support from Power Africa. The IEA has been uh, the first, actually. Uh, to produce global database of uh, electricity access information uh, since the early, uh, the beginning of, of this century, and uh, is also one of the co-custodians of SDG7. So um, here, this is a portal that is available uh, openly from our website, in which you have uh, the disaggregation and the data and trends uh, for uh, both access to electricity and the access to clean cooking. And uh, as also mentioned earlier, uh, we've been producing through this program, uh, this guidebook for improved electricity access statistics, which is a step-by-step -step guide to develop access to electricity indicators uh, using supply side data. Um, through this work, we've been uh, interacting with uh, and working uh, actively with the uh, statistics office in all the countries uh, in the continent in order for them to um, like gain, gain the IEA expertise in, in terms of statistics and being able to uh, report on a yearly basis with the highest granularity, at least for the time being possible, uh, in terms of uh, the access to, to electricity data. So um, while performing this, um, we, of course, this is the access part. We've uh, highlighted how crucial it is to uh, work on planning, uh, especially on the electricity access side, um, to attain SDG 7 by the end of this decade, uh, given that right now we are not on, on track to, to do this. So for this, we've also, uh, we are also releasing today this new, um, this new product that is the GS catalog for energy planning in Africa. But for people that might not be familiar with what GIS is, which, is, which stands for uh, Geographic Information System. Uh, a Geographic Information System is a technology uh, that captures, stores, analyzes, and also presents data um, with a very like a specific peculiarity, which is um, their position on the Earth's surface. So here, um, just also to flag, this presentation will be shared with all the attendees later on, so you will also have the possibility to reread it. But the key component of GIS are data input, data management, data analysis, and visualization. So this is the same for all kinds of data. This is nothing new. The new uh, and the innovation, let's say, and the peculiarity of GIS data and it is that these data, often big data, also have a geographical component, a geographical uh, attribute. So uh, the IEA, as I said, um, and through this program and in general through its, its, uh, its work, has conducted an extensive evaluation 
uh, to understand the utilization of GIS in shaping electricity access strategies across the continent. Um, this assessment involved interactions uh, in the sometimes uh, interactions with a broad spectrum of stakeholders, including ministries, utilities, ratification agencies, and also partners in the private sector. Um, and here you have a couple of uh, the results of these uh, interactions, and also um, this aggregates some of the results from our interviews and surveys, and also uh, information from our partners from the, the World Bank through their uh, global policy scorecard platform, which is the RISE, so regulatory indicators for sustainable energy uh, database. Uh, these examples, uh, pretty, like uh, I think it's pretty obvious how GIS is already used a lot across the continent uh, in planning and expanding electricity access, and it uh, demonstrates the critical role of geospatial analysis in meeting, uh, in helping the continent meeting its electrification goals already today and uh, hopefully in the future. So during this assessment, we've uh, we've seen, of course, each of these countries have their own um, history of using GIS for planning uh, with different scopes. Uh, but we, what we've seen is a lack of coordination, sometimes awareness of the available data sets and models, and also sometimes uh, lack of coordination in terms of which are the responsibilities uh, in terms of like between the different stakeholders within um within a country and for this we've been basically uh, collecting uh, and doing like a comprehensive review of what are the available data sets in the sector right now for gs based planning uh, what are the, um, the existing models and tools that can uh, be used to perform gs based um, access planning and also a list of the institutions per country that work currently or are uh, starting right now to integrate JS uh, within their operation for, of course, energy planning. So all of this is now contained in the IEA GIS catalog for energy planning that we are also releasing today, which is, uh, in our idea, uh, I would say a one-stop shop uh, and like a resource for GIS-driven planning uh, for pro professionals across the continent or that work with the continent to uh, have uh, a comprehensive overview of what uh, is available in the space right now, in the sector right now, to do GIS based planning. So uh, again, as I said, we will be sharing right after this uh, this webinar all the links and the material. This is a screenshot from our website, but as you can see, this catalog right now has three sections, one for data sets, one for models, and one per country. And you can see how you can filter all the data sets available uh, by type of data. You have uh, the possibility, to, as I said, to see the models too and decide like and, and filter them by type of model you're looking for. And of course, also uh, by country, we have a quick overview of what's the status of the GIS integration within their operation. And you also have an overview of what are the, um, the relevant stakeholders in uh, each of these, um, in, in each of these uh, countries. And the possibility of course, to also uh, filter again those data sets and models that are present in the first two sections, um, specifically uh, on these uh, on the country you are interested in to see if there are data sets that are country specific uh, or models that are country specific for the country you are interested in, and also um, in case you uh, there are also data sets and models that are country wide that of course can uh, be applied to country specific uh, context and and analysis. Um, so this is a quick overview. Again, you will uh, get all the links to, to access those resources. Uh, but as you've seen also in the model section, there are many, and again, I, I, I went through all the, the, the participants of this webinar, and I know many of you are uh, professionals in the GIS space. So I'm pretty sure most of these won't be, won't be news, uh, but I wanted to, to go through a bit some of the kind of applications that uh, GIS is currently, um, with which uh, GIS is currently used across the continent to do uh, planning. And of course, one of these is um, least cost electrification. So for people that might not know, what we do is overlay different type of uh, GIS layers and basically uh, with different resolutions. But let's say the idea is with the uh, as much as possible granularity, being able to decide for different settlements, 
different contexts, so with this very context specific approach to uh, assess what's the best, uh, so the least cost uh, notification technology uh, among on grid, off grid, and uh, uh, southern, and um, sorry, among on grid, uh, mini grid, and southern systems. Uh, and this is, of course, based on different types of, of layers of considerations, uh, like the distance from um, the existing transmission and distribution grids, the resources available in terms of renewables, uh, and of course, the energy demand in, in the location. This is an example from our Africa Energy Output 22, in which we performed such an analysis at the continent level, and you can see how uh, this resulted in this chart in which we can see uh, very quickly uh, that to achieve, to achieve at SG7 by 2023, uh, these are the, um, the, um, this is the segregation in, ter in terms of type of technologies that we think are the uh, most suitable for each of these, uh, these contexts, the, for each context in the continent that currently don't have access to electricity. And from this, we can uh, find out that at least 70% of uh, people can uh, be uh, and gain access uh, to electricity for the first time through renewable uh, energy. Uh, one thing that um, specifically uh, we decided to address with this project, and uh, again, of course, this is one of the components that you will see in the Africa GIS catalog. And but again, if many of you, uh, as I know, are work on GIS based energy planning, they will know that uh, demand. Uh, the demand estimation um, in an area really influences the result of a least cost electrification model. Why? Because if we have different demands, of course, uh, the uh, technical, uh, technical, economic uh, best, like optimal solution uh, from a technical and economic point of view would differ depending on uh, what the local demand. So um, here you have an example, for instance, of three uh, results of um, in terms of least cost electrification, depending on different scenarios in terms of demand, low, medium, and high. Even if we don't go through the details here, you can see how, in terms of uh, like visually, uh, how the results of GIS-based uh, least cost electrification tools differ depending on um, how much demand we are anticipating uh, to provide to such of the to for to each of the settlements and uh, actually the population that live in this region and imagine when we do it at the, the continent level. So the reason, um, and this is one point, so this is the, important on the importance of the demand part. Uh, the second thing is that during this assessment of available data sets, models, et cetera, what we notice is that there is a lack of available data sets out there um, and models actually that um, allow uh, detailed demand estimation, and that's why we decided to partner with MIT to uh, address the specific gap uh, in the sector. So I will uh, leave now the floor to Stephen, uh, our colleague from MIT, uh, to walk us through uh, what is the building level electricity uh, access and demand uh, estimation model. Uh, up to you, Stephen. Thanks, Darlene. Uh, it says I can't share because uh, you're yes, sharing. You should be able to do it now. Fantastic. Thank you all for your time today. Um, I'm here to introduce our electricity access and demand layers and also our platform, Open Energy Maps. Uh, what we're doing is developing an open source state of the arts machine learning system that can scale to provide what we really think of as the most comprehensive and granular view of electricity and ac electricity access and demand possible. Um, this is really aimed at aiding governments, utilities, planners, um, researchers, and so on. And we, we believe that we're really addressing a, a pretty significant set of data gaps. Uh, this data could be used, for instance, in planning, um, and, and as, as Darlin mentioned, um, how to design systems and choose different electrification supply technologies. Uh, today, we're going to start with three countries, Uganda, Ghana, and Senegal. But as we'll describe, um, actually, all the remote sensing features that we use are actually available across the African continent. and. Uh, and elsewhere across the globe, actually, so we can extend to other regions. So this is our website, um, openenergymaps.org. It's it's officially live now, um, and you can click ex Explore. And I come right to our kind of Choose a Maps page. 
Uh, you'll need to create an account and log in um, for your first time visiting the platform. And we can kind of move into the maps and, and see a description of what our platform is currently showing, but also some documentation that you can click on and, um, and, and read up on really what's going on under, under the hood here. And um, we want to actually, I uh, was uh, thinking to start with our outputs very quickly. So we have different layers on the left panel. We have an electricity access layer and a demand layer. And um, let's just look at the access layer for now. So you can see we have a, a lot of dots covering Uganda currently. And as we zoom in, um, this will resolve and uh, we end up seeing individual buildings and building footprints. And what you're seeing right now is just the output of our models. Um, we have all of our different building shapes covering the whole country. Um, we'll, we'll describe later on where that comes from. Um, but what you're seeing here are different colors. And this is really sort of a heat map where um, the yellow color corresponds to higher likelihood of electricity access and more orange and red and purple colors correspond to lower likelihoods of access. And if we click on a given uh, building, you can see actually a distribution that's being estimated for whether or not uh, that building has access. This particular building um, has something like we think a 44% likelihood of having access. Um, you can click that off and, and move to the demands layer. And actually, we see the same buildings. Um, but what we're seeing here um, is, is a different color scale. Um, it's also a heat map. Um, but for all the different buildings in our geography, we have estimated electricity demand in terms of kilowatt hours per month. And this rainbow color scale, where blue implies uh, lower consumption, lower demand, and um, yellows, oranges, and reds uh, imply more and more demand. And as you can see, we can pan across our uh, region of interest and, and see really the diversity of, of demand that's being estimated uh, across this sort of spatial scale. So I'm going to start by talking about, you know, these buildings. Um, these have been really a game changer for us in, in how we've um, been able to do our research in the last couple of years. So these are just the buildings themselves without any layers added on. Um, and they come from Google and Microsoft. And they actually have computer vision models that uh, scan all of Google Maps and, and Bing Maps imagery. And they actually outline the building, um, all, all the different buildings. And what we're doing is we're actually taking these two independent data sets and merging them together such that we have really what we think of as a very complete view of, of what should comprise most buildings in our countries of interest. Um, and they're important because, well, um, we're estimating demand and access at the building level, but also they provide what, what's called the primary key, where we can actually relate other features of interest to these buildings. And uh, you'll, you'll see each building has its own unique identifier that, that is that primary key with its own lat long uh, description. Um, so actually our two first features of interest that we compute are building density and building rooftop area. And the rooftop area comes directly from the data set itself. Um, it's, it's some simple geometry to compute that area. Uh, the building density is a little bit more complicated, but really what it is is we draw a radius around a building and we count all of the nearby buildings inside of this local area. And this gives you a sense for the urbanization of a given building. And we actually have these calculations and all the features replicated for every building across all of our countries of interest. Um, and what we do is, so in addition to these density and rooftop area features, we add additional features and, and one key feature as um, has been introduced is high resolution satellite imagery. And this is now very globally available. Um, what we do is we actually take a, a clip of uh, large mosaic imagery and we take a, really a tile that's directly overhead of our building of interest. And this will tell you a lot of things about, well, what's the local area look like? What does the building itself look like? It's rooftop it's uh, local roads and so on and so forth. And there's a lot of really rich information in that imagery itself. We actually also use another type of satellite imagery. This is nighttime lights imagery. 
and our platform lets us zoom out and see Kampala and uh, these different irradiance um, readings that are taken at night. And you can click around and, and see uh, the different values that have been obtained. And this gives you a, a sense for street lights. And you might think, you know, the, the more brighter the area is, likely the more economic activity is happening locally, and likely the higher the demand is. Our next feature is actually a, a, a layer called uh, internet speeds. And what this is, is um, an aggregation of different speed tests that people do when they're testing their internet connection and, and how fast it is. And one of the companies that does this, Ookla, actually aggregates this information and makes it uh, publicly available at these grid cell levels of aggregation. And you can click on one of these grid cells, and you can see things like average download speed, upload speed, so on and so forth, and the number of devices that have tests. Um, and, and this is also a correlate um, for electricity demand and access. Um, and, and maybe access is pretty straightforward if you have uh, fixed internet connections, it's uh, very likely you have electricity, um, it's, it's required. Um, but actually we have these layers for mobile as well. And um, uh, also uh, the idea is that <clears throat> you might think the higher the internet speed is um, and the more people who are uh, testing for internet speed, the more affordability there is in, the, in that local region for higher demand as well. Um, and lastly, we, we don't have it visualized here, but we have this uh, comprehensive land use data set that we're using. So we're gonna go back to these buildings and um, it is that we really have a very rich description of each of, each of these buildings. Um, and what we do is we then map all of these buildings to uh, whatever utility data, metered utility data that we can uh, collect and we have, a lot of people to thank for that um, access to that data through the IEA and other contacts. And what we do and, and what our model does is try to learn relationships between all the different features that we talked about, the internet speeds, the nighttime lights, the satellite imagery, um, and uh, map these relationships to ultimately observed uh, metered consumption data. And um, so this is really where we think, uh, and you know, we, we use the power of machine learning to uh, to uh, learn a model that's capable of um, finding these relationships, and uh, that's also capable of being extended elsewhere to regions that actually we don't have that metered data, where maybe there's um, no connections at all, or maybe there's uh, electricity connections, but there's no meter data present, or even in some cases where maybe someone in the world has that meter data, um, but we don't as planners, um, we can still estimate that consumption and that access. And in the end, what we get are the different layers that we talked about, the access layer here. And, and this is in Kampala, uh, you know, very electrified. So that's, that's not as interesting, um, but we have the demand layer as well. And um, we have for all of these different buildings now, um, what we think of as really key inputs to uh, planning methodologies. Um, so with this platform, we, we make all of our different data sets available um, for download. And the current uh, view is, is um, hosted already. And what we actually have is um, grid cells for, for all of our regions of interest. And you can click on one of these grid cells, find a download link, and this, this is a fairly dense area. It might take a little while, um, but you can see a GeoJSON file is being downloaded. Uh, that's a pretty universal file type that can be used in many different GIS softwares and program, in programming languages, et cetera. Now, there's, there's a couple of limitations to this work. Um, this is a really hard problem from a machine learning perspective to solve. Um, really, there's an inherent lack of information uh, it's hard to know with very high accuracy what's going on inside of a given building or, or household, given just what we see from outside and what we're seeing from remote sensing features. Uh, really, you, you can't see what's happening inside of the households themselves. And there's actually a lot of um, variability, even in buildings that look identical to one another that might have the same exact remote characteristics. Uh, so 
um, what we do is we actually treat this problem probabilistically. We say, well, you know, we're, we're not going to say we, we know exactly the answer, but we know maybe what the distribution for a given building may be, given all the other observations of uh, metered consumption that we've seen previously. And uh, that's what we're providing here. We're providing this uh, distribution. And um, the way that this is read is that actually there's some likelihood that uh, an entire range of consumption values um, may occur at this building or a range of demand values um, may characterize the building. Um, but um, maybe we can provide some one mean estimate and, and use that if we were to just give one uh, value. Another challenge is that um, it's actually really difficult to generalize. So we have a lot of our uh, ground truth meter consumption data in East Africa. And um, it's it's challenging to think, well, how well can you do in other areas if you don't actually have the ability to test it and have ground truth in other areas of the continent? And lastly, we have uh, challenges due to class imbalance, where you can imagine there's actually many, many more buildings that may look like this, you know, these, these lower demand buildings. Um, maybe they, they're rural or, or you know, more suburban. And we have relatively fewer, very large consuming buildings. And, and this just makes training machine learning models very challenging and um, is a source for error as well. Um, so to conclude, um, our machine learning model is able to learn relationships between what we think of as a very rich characterization uh, for most buildings on the continent and in the world. And um, what we're actually looking for is to, to grow this platform um, we, we've spent a couple of years building this, but we think it's also um, just the start of likely um, much more to come. And we're looking for uh, partnerships and resources and specifically uh, high resolution data. And, and that can help us uh, really improve our results. And um, otherwise, thank you for tuning in. I'd like to give thanks to the IEA, Power Africa, uh, our collaborators at UMass and eGuide. And of course, our utility and government partners, without whom we couldn't have built any of these systems. Um, thanks very much. Back to you, Darlene. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, let me share my screen again, just to conclude. Um, so thank you very much, Stephen. I hope, um, and I think actually it was very clear and uh, just wanted to recap a bit the overall structure of the of the model, and then we can finish with the conclusion. So just to be um, just to be like clear and and summarizing, you might know again nothing new for most of you. I think that we might have three types of um, situations in in Africa in a, in a country. We have buildings that don't have access to electricity. We have um, buildings that have access to electricity but no meter or maybe they have a meter, but it's not geolocated. So we are not actually able to characterize those buildings in terms of consumption. And then we have electricity uh, access, like building with access and meter data and hopefully geolocated. Um, what we've done basically has been, uh, since we, we were able to collect with the partner utilities from um, the three pilot countries and partner countries that we had in this project, uh, that were Ghana, uh, Senegal and Uganda, we are able uh, to collect those information in terms of demand. So we know actually uh, what's the demand of some of these buildings. As mentioned by Stephen, we have the building footprints for most of the buildings in those countries. And we, what we've done has been basically to train this algorithm in characterizing each of these buildings based on this layer that uh, Stephen has been describing to solve this problem, which is how much is electricity consumption both for areas um, that don't have access to electricity. So this, in this case, we're talking about the needs for those buildings, even if they don't have access to electricity right now, in the future, in case we had to electrify them. So this helps the planning phase, as you might guess, but also for areas in which we have electricity, but we don't have meter data, so that we are able also to support utilities in understanding and characterizing even better their customer base and uh, uh, on a very granular in terms of uh, geographical, uh, geographical granularity. So going to the conclusions, um, 
there are many potential applications, as you might guess by this. Just wanted to go through some of these. Um, of course, for this, sorry, for decision makers, I don't know what's happening with my laptop. Decision makers, um, funders uh, in uh, like doing decision making. Uh, what we want to do is being able to enhance local planning capabilities. So providing granular data to uh, empower local statistics divisions and planner uh, planning teams. Uh, we want to uh, support project development and project developers, of course, so that they can have uh, more detailed uh, data for business planning. Um, and then last but not least, but this is what I, where I will stop here, uh, in terms of policy and planning tool integration, uh, of course, this is an input data most of the time for many of the tools that are available and the great tools that are available right now in the space. So uh, what we want is uh, provide a new uh, data set that could be integrated to these tools to have better uh, understanding of where access to electricity, like where um, access to electricity is and how much is the uh, demand of those areas that lack access to electricity today and what's the consumption of those areas that currently have access to electricity. Uh, I will be a bit quick here just because in the interest of time and want to uh, leave space for a Q&A, but I'm, as many of you are GIS professionals, you might guess what are the kind of uh, GIS analysis that you could do with this, having, for instance, settlements uh, polygon and aggregating those data from the building level to the cluster and settlement level. So being able for, at a community level to say how many people have or don't have access to electricity, and also characterize um, buildings and households and uh, productive uses by type of and level of electricity consumption. What we've done in the case of the three countries that were partnered in this program was to apply this methodology for the entire country. And here you can see the results. And one of the most uh, uh, striking outcomes that we came out with is that areas that already have access to electricity um, are actually consuming less than they could. Uh, most of the time, the reasons are two. One is affordability, and the second one uh, is uh, reliability. So a, a second message that we want to, uh, to convene also from this analysis is that it's really important, yes, to focus on uh, providing access to electricity to unelectrified areas, but it's also really important for utilities to focus on areas that currently uh, already have access to electricity, uh, but might have either, as I said, affordability issues, sorry, affordability issues and reliability issues to really reinforce the grid and make sure that people that could already have the possibility to use this electricity um, also from for productive use uh, could actually do it and could have 24-7 um, availability um, and of course uh, afford that uh, that service. So to conclude, uh, the target stakeholders for us here, you have them here, but like it's, it's you, all of you. So government agencies, utilities, uh, NGOs, researchers, and local governments, and of course also investment and financial institutions be able to, uh, to uh, prepare better and make better decision and better investments. Um, in terms of next steps, we have two things. The first thing, and is the immediate one, is the integration, as I said, with the, uh, of this model with the existing JS-based models and tools, um, and collaboration with partners. So we welcome um, the possibility to partner with uh, many of you um, to actually apply this model and these uh, results and integrate those and uh, into your models, your analysis. Uh, as Stephen said, all the data and the model actually will be open, uh, openly available for download and you can already use them, but feel free to contact us also in case you will be interested in um, further insights on, on those. And the second thing, and it's a bit more the long term, uh, is the geographical scaling and the model enhancement. So on one side, as said, uh, stated by Stephen, there is a lot of data in terms of input for the model to be trained and being able to differentiate between different areas and characterize them and having really lot of context specific results. But this means that we need data from utilities that are a comprehensive uh, sample 
of all the type of uh, geographies and uh, uh, specificities that we have within a country and, of course, uh, across different countries. And, of course, we will be also working together with uh, uh, our colleagues from MIT, from with Stephen, in particular with the model enhancement, because as you might guess, and I'm pretty sure uh, you all guess this, there are many, uh, many features that we could include this, starting um, from, for example, the type of buildings that somehow is embedded right now, but could be also an input to the model itself. So uh, this is it. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I think we'll go through some of the questions uh, we have in our Q&A box right now. And then we will uh, conclude with uh, some remarks also from uh, our sponsor and partner from uh, Power Africa. Thank you very much. And, yeah. So feel free to put the Q&A, so, sorry, your questions in the Q&A box. I will go through them right now and uh, maybe answer some of them and also defer uh, to Stephen some of these. But as I said, after this, um, this uh, webinar, we will share all the materials with the link, et cetera. And in case there are some questions we won't be able to, to answer, we will uh, share them with, uh, like share an answer with you. So I see many of these questions actually were posted during the presentation and were basically answered. One thing I see here in, is uh, in terms of question, which is related to the possibility to include new tools and models and data sets in the GIS data catalog. Yes, uh, so feel free to send us an email um, to, uh, to suggest if you have any data set and model that you think is relevant here, we will be more than happy to evaluate that and to uh, include it in the GIS catalog. We will do it right now, like right after the publication with a, a short-term update to include what we might have missed. Uh, but then our goal is to uh, have probably a six month uh, update of this, data, uh, of this catalog to make sure that new initiatives, new models and new data sets are include, included um, in it. Uh, yeah, I think, so looking at all the questions, I think actually most of them have been answered by either I, myself or Steven. Uh, and also in the, in the interest of time, I would prefer leave uh, to leave the floor to Samson to close with uh, some remarks from Power Africa. And then, as I said, we will uh, uh, collect all the questions, answer to them, and uh, share them with the, the audience and also uh, a broader, uh, broader audience. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And Samson, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Darlene. And thanks to everyone um, that had made time to attend this um, session on, on this work we've done together with the IEA. Um, as Power Africa, our goal is to increase generation capacity in Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as bring more um, connections. And the, to increase generation, you really need to understand what the demand profile looks like, what the existing infrastructure look like, and how do you cry out crowd in the necessary stakeholders to to build out and invest in this um, asset. And this uh, um, data-driven electrification um, program in Africa that we've um, supported with um, the IEA has really demonstrated the capabilities of um, the new tools that are available. And, and uh, as I've often said, there's nothing hidden under the sun. And so far, the sun can see it. Um, and there's some a, a level of details that could be just partially um, derived. Um, a popular um, quote from um, the Energy for Good says, there's no industrialized nation that is not high, that is low on energy consumption. So, and you could see some of this work has shown that um, a lot of the people that are getting connected are still on the low tiers of um, consumptions and how do we move them up? Um, as part Africa, we cannot do it alone. Um, we can only do it um, increase generation, increase connection, and also increase demand productively um, together with our partners. And um, we are proud to have um, supported this work. Um, and um, thanks to the IEA and the stakeholders involved, MIT, for doing this detailed um, level of work. It's been a couple of years uh, we've been working on this. And I know we still have sort of many questions um, um, to answer, but I think um, at this point, we, we feel confident that this could 
go out in public and more importantly also to capacitate uh, people in countries, people that are making this decision, making this data available and bringing the necessary capacity to do this modeling, building off this data and really making insightful um, decision at the local level on where the right electrification should go, the method technologies and uh, the kind of access that, that is desirable and building this over a um, couple of years. Um, uh, with that, I will stop not only myself, uh, but I also have Pamela Choka together with me on this um, program and the whole Power Africa team. Thank you very much to the IEA and uh, our stakeholders. And that will be it from me. Over to you, Dali. Thank you very much, Samson. Uh, so we are over with uh, our time. So I will use this last minute to thank, first of all, Power Africa for the support. Uh, all the stakeholders with which we have been working through this program, uh, in particular uh, from the three partner countries we had, um, which were Ghana, Senegal, and Uganda. Uh, thank you for to MIT also, of course, for the support, especially in the development of the, this building uh, level electricity access and demand estimation model. Uh, we will be sharing all the materials, the presentation, the links to all these pieces of work that we've been mentioning, uh, together with the documentation on how to use the different tools. And uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure and have all great days. Thank you.